Heroes 2 is a game with five distinct factions, each with their own strengths and weaknesses. Today, we're going to be looking at the strengths and weaknesses of the British faction, and how to open against the Wehrmacht and OKW. With me today, detailing the faction, is my British specialist, Infinite. Hello. Yes, so Infinite, why don't you first detail the strengths and weaknesses of the faction? The strengths are is that they bring a ton of firepower to the table early and late game. The mid game with them can be a little bit uh, strange though, because you require a lot of manpower. You're, you have very expensive units for the allies. Um, you have access to your howitzers and your base. You have the extremely potent infantry section, a really good light vehicle with the carrier. But the problem with the Brits is, is that you have so many options to use, and they're really hard to replace if you use them because they're so expensive. Especially early game, if you lose a squad, more so than with the Soviet or, or with the US forces, you would say that it is a far more crippling uh, blow. Yeah, I would say so, because while they're not as, as expensive as riflemen, before they used to have a longer reinforcement time and stuff like that, but they're but the things you spend later, like your engineers and like all of your stuff in tier two is pretty expensive to make. And you could, you honestly need a lot of the stuff in there to react to what your opponent's doing or to stay a step ahead. Awesome analysis. Well, in that case then, let's dive over to the openings that you have provided. First, let's start off with the general opening. First, you want to start off with your four man band as that you would naturally get and acquire a Vickers. Once you get this vicar set up, the next thing you'd want to go for is the section. This allows you to provide firepower with your opening vicars and will also be a great support with your universal carrier. Yeah, so the universal carrier you generally want to get on most maps. It provides you so much firepower, it's really hard to kill unless they get an early AT gun. And almost every time, unless you're like on a more urban map, you're gonna wanna grab that Vickers K upgrade. That upgrade is extremely versatile, it's extremely lethal against enemy infantry squads in long range. It can be used as a sniper hunter if you catch it off guard. It just does everything. It can even suppress if you spend a little bit of muni on it. The fire used to be really good. It still is in a building heavy environment, but it's just not as potent since they did that flame nerf, what, like three, four, five patches back? It was a long time ago, yeah, but thankfully they're starting, they brought it back up because it does have an armor bonus now. It's a lot harder to kill with small arms if you get the wasp. Yeah, true, true, true. So afterward, after you get your UC and nine times out of 10, get that Vickers K upgrade, you want a tech so that way you can acquire the Royal Engineer. As soon as you get to this Royal Engineer, get another section. This will provide you the basic framework that way you have early inf in infantry, early anti-infantry potential, and enough snare and suppression against most enemy builds, whether it's Wehrmacht or OKW. Yeah, so... The biggest thing you have to watch out for is mainly the Wehrmacht. By five minutes, they can potentially have the armored car. And if you don't have those Royal Engineers out, you don't really have it. You don't have a snare on sections. So you need to make sure you're keeping well in mind where your Royal Engineer is when you get him. So for this build and for this general build, what would you say are the tanks that are most necessary? I would argue that like a Churchill and Firefly are the two most likely to build tanks late game. So definitely the Firefly because that's your tank destroyer and with the Tulip Rocket upgrade, there's not a lot in the game that can match your damage potential. It's the guaranteed damage if you hit it. As for the other UKF tanks, that's actually another reason why UKF late game is so strong. They have so many options that are all, honestly all useful one way or another. I'd argue that the Cromwell is, in my opinion, I have terrible luck with the Cromwell is the weakest choice. But it's also really good for hunting down rocket art artillery in the back or just in general if you need a tank out immediately and you don't want to get the centaur and rush not having like a good tank you can still get it arguably i'd say that hammer is a more favorable uh choice right now just due to the comet being so versatile and hard to kill it's fast has amazing range it does everything you really need 
Yeah, it's really like an allied panther, you would say, but can deal with infantry uh, rather effectively. Not not as well as like a centaur, but still, it can pack a wall. Yeah, the centaur is a bit weird because the centaur is really expensive. And if you need AA, it honestly might be better to uh, grab a bow first. It's, extra it's cheaper pop cap wise than a machine gun right now. Well, here, do you want to speak on your second opening that you may know it would be good against okw or with a soviet in support yeah so the second build is is that you can go a section spam opening so you don't build anything besides infantry sections typically between two or three infantry sections so you'll have three or four total um now the thing about sections is is that against Obra commando the okw OKW struggles extremely hard to deal with sections. Their infantry just doesn't have the firepower or the the survivability to stand toe to toe with infantry sections. So generally speaking, that's why if you ever watch like competitive co games, they have to play around the sections and make sure to get on their flanks and stuff like that. And if you have a teammate that's a Soviet, he can cover your mortars and machine guns so you can be the offensive punching power even though traditionally sections are meant to be used behind cover. Yeah, and the main focus and the reason why you say, especially against OKW, is that this is very susceptible to an MG uh, suppression against uh, if you're fighting Wehrmacht. Um, or, I'd say mid-game OKW. So having a Soviet that can provide mortar cover, specifically smoke, I, I would say is absolutely essential for this build. Yeah, for sure, because um, you won't really have a smoke option until you tech, which that goes into the next part of this build. You're going to want to tech after your last section. You don't really need, unless you really want something else in tier one building, I would recommend just teching it right away and getting to uh, tier two and getting your Royal Engineer out. Um, and then here I listed down, you can get a medic. So that way you can spend a little bit of your muni on things like the artillery flares, the smoke flares. Um, if you're early enough, you can get your, uh, your frag grenade build if you want to. But um, generally you're just revolving completely around these infantry sections and you want to make sure that you keep them alive because they're really hard to veterans. They're really hard to get veterancy with. They have really high requirements. So keeping them alive and topped up as much as possible is important. And also, after your medic, if you get one, uh, get an AT gun and you'll be a real big help to your teammate. Now, one thing I do want to stress for this, this building uh, specifically is you do recommend having the five man upgrade as soon as possible, correct? Uh, yes, if you're going this build, you probably want to get the bolster infantry section as soon as possible. Excellent point. And then let's go on to your third, which you say ties really well with the USF. Yeah, so the third build is really good with the United States forces because the US forces obviously have debatably the best punching power early when it comes to uh, pushing against people. They have the riflemen. So with this build, you're gonna wanna go a Vickers, an infantry section, and then go into attack. So basically you're just getting some bare essentials. You're gonna have your machine gun to suppress. You're gonna have your two infantry sections to help the USF cover flanks and push with them. And then the tech, so now you can grab whatever, if you want the flares, the medic kits, whatever. Generally speaking though, the reason you want to go this is because the United States forces, if you're going, especially against Fairmont, you the US mortar is dirt cheap and it's really good. Honestly, I don't see it enough, which is a crime. I think people just get overshadowed with the fact that the howitzer is so amazing that they forget that even though the mortar isn't as good as the howitzer, it's still great in its own regard. And unlike the howitzer, you get smoke you have really fast pull down smoke. I still argue smoke is like one of the most undervalued things in this game. Like it's so, so powerful. Yeah, especially when your entire faction is meant to get to mid to close range and just wipe the floor with whatever gets close to you. Very true. So after you get your Vickers and your uh, other infantry section you tech, uh, why would you recommend the Assault Officer or Sniper? So the Assault Officer or Sniper both provide a very strong boost to an earlier mid game comp and they also both scale incredibly hard. Particularly the Assault Officer gives you recon. It becomes a very hard squad to deal with. It 
mid to close range because the the stand guns that the officer uses with his with his like entourage have really good accuracy at the mid range. They have gammon bombs. The way he calls in the howitzers and stuff like that and the off map smoke is not like the infantry sections. He just throws three flares off the map. Like he doesn't even have to throw them and it's way faster than doing it with the section. He also gains shared veterancy. So you can keep, you can push with your USF ally and get him vetted up really fast. And as for the sniper, the sniper is very interesting for the Brits because it comes out late enough that you can react to the enemy getting their own if they build it early enough. And also the British sniper can deal a little bit of minor damage to light vehicles and in late game scenarios if you keep it alive it has that critical shot which depending on what type of vehicle you're shooting at gives a different type of negative effect towards what you're shooting at duly noted so you would say that the biggest weakness for this one especially early on if you go sniper as a counter sniper or an early mech play like a 222 coming at you because you really don't have that since you're going for your assault officer or the sniper you don't have that snare until afterward you get you finally get this you know a royal engineer and the anti-tank gun later on this is partly why you don't get much in tier one you're saving that early manpower so you can grab that slightly more expensive squad right after you tech if i remember correctly because i haven't done it in a minute i haven't been with a usf in a while but generally speaking, your uh, Royal Engineer will come out around the same time, if not just a slight bit later. And all you have to do is just play a little bit carefully and play around your teammate's rifleman if he is tacking really fast. Awesome. Well, um, other than that, are there any other final notes you want to say about the British faction in general? I would say that you really have to win the infantry game because in the later stages, while your armor is fantastic, you really don't have rocket already to support with. So that's really gonna be on your teammates to help you, especially against massive infantry blobs. Yeah, the Brits definitely out of all the factions in the game struggle with blob control the most, uh, purely because they don't ha even have something like the Scott. They only have their uh, the base howitzers. But at the same time, you just make up for that in a lot of other areas you have fantastic doctrines you just bring by far in the base roster the most firepower out of all the allied factions and it's to me not even close some notes in my opinion is if that if you're gonna be trying to pick up the brits it's gonna be hard it's not gonna be too hard on your micro per se maybe just a little bit because you want to try to find every piece of cover you can during fights even if just one guy gets in it because it applies to the rest of the squad. The hard part is going to be reacting and preemptively guessing what your opponent's gonna do because your 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 stuff is so expensive. And it's just keeping mental notes of what can I do here that'll really help me. And the reason why in any of these build orders I didn't put a pit or in the other general builds that weren't the one focused around the sniper or the officer is because Generally speaking, you're gonna build those to supplement whatever's happening and not more so something set in stone. Honestly, I think that this game, like honestly, for right now, this is probably some of the more balanced times we've had in Company of Heroes 2. We've definitely seen some ups and downs with this game in terms of like the people crying out what faction is OP and what factions aren't OP. I think we're finally getting closer to that point where we can say like, it's pretty well balanced, all things considered. Yes, you can say both sides are OP in their own regards. Oh yeah. But here, thank you again for stopping by. If you guys have any builds you recommend for the British, leave it down in the comments below. I'm Grayshot151, with me, the amazing Infinite, and I will see you all next time. Until then, we will catch you all later. Deuces. Hey guys, before you go, I want to give a special shout out to Patreon supporters, Folkford, Afria, Joey G240, Ace, Shinobi Warrior, Pyro Shark, Little Koosh, and Seth Coopers. Thank you all for your incredible support. You guys rock. This has been Grayshot17 and his amazing patrons, and I'll see all of you next time.